that's the reason why either through Walmart or Amazon, why a store would, would get shut down. Yeah, so there are suspensions and terminations. And uh, unfortunately, you know, it's one of those things where like one party ruined it for the rest of us. So there's inexperienced sellers that come on, you know, Walmart as a platform just blew the hell up over the past two years. Like, what would you say is the difference? Like, obviously, I imagine that there's some strategy when listing the items for sale. Can, can you share any insight? on? Of course. So competitive pricing is obviously number one. You know, if your prices are too high and you don't want to adjust fast enough, someone's going to take you out and get the buy box. What would be an example of a product that you guys would potentially list on a Facebook marketplace. Yeah. So, I mean, we've done, like I, I always bring up toaster ovens just because I see them all the time. Toaster ovens, coffee machines, uh, electronics, health and beauty, even some food stuff. I mean, dude, everything. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Jose Luis Morales. Welcome back to the Morales Group Show. This is episode number 89. Today, we've got a very special guest. His name is Colin. Yurkison. He is an e-commerce, I wouldn't say guru, but somebody that really knows it extremely well. Today, he's going to be sharing with us how he was able to go from $50,000 in debt to ob obviously building multi-million uh, dollar e-commerce stores. Welcome to the show, Colin. How are you? I'm doing great, my man. Appreciate you having me on. So before we get started, I just want to remind our viewers that if you've enjoyed a previous episode, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And then if you feel that this episode is valuable in any way to any friends, family, or, or just people that you know, make sure to share it. So let's get right into it, Colin. Who is Colin and how did you happen to stumble upon the e-commerce? So yeah, basically my story is pretty, pretty normal. I grew up in a, in a middle-class family, played sports in high school, went to college, University of Arizona, joined a fraternity, partied for four years, got out of college right into a job. So life kind of just stopped. I was working at a corporate sales job at ADP, the payroll company. I realized within like two weeks, you know, I had $20,000 worth of student loans. I had about 10 K worth of credit card debt. And I took out a $20,000 personal loan to make an investment in these people that ended up being scammers. You know, I was very naive. I thought everyone had my best interest in mind. Quickly, I was $50,000 in debt, working at a job. I absolutely hated living with people. Um, I didn't really align with uh, driving a car I hated and just absolutely miserable, enslaved in my own creation. So what I did was I just, instead of just whining about it all day and being a victim, what I did is uh, it took me to a rock bottom. I actually got drugged and I woke up in someone's house. I had no idea where I was. And I came home and I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm either going to die. I'm either going to have to live back with mom and dad, um, you know, tell them I'm in all this debt. Or I'm going to get myself out of this mess I created. And maybe this all happened for a reason, which it did. The universe, you know, makes things happen for you. It doesn't do things to you. So it was all done for me. When I started looking at it like that, that's when life got pretty good. I, I started my personal brand uh, in August, 2019, and I quit my job, you know, 50 grand in debt. And I went all in on personal branding. So I help people grow Instagram accounts, you know, as far as engagement, as far as followers goes, as far as content. I did it for myself. People were like, yo, how'd you get, you know, 20,000 followers? I see you quit your job. What are you doing? You're crazy. And I would just help people give value. And, and slowly that, you know, started my first stream of income. I made 10 grand my first month by myself out of my job. So I had momentum. Uh, my credit, like I said, I defaulted on that that twenty thousand dollar loan. I couldn't pay that thing off. It was seven hundred bucks a month, high interest, like twelve percent. I let that thing default, so my credit went down like a six hundred. So that was really bad. Um, but what I did was instead of once again being a victim of it, I said, you know what? Maybe this is happening for me. Maybe I should look at credit. So I looked at my credit report. I learned the Fair Credit Reporting Act. I learned that you can dispute things. And if they can't prove it, they must remove it. So I got a lot of those items removed. My score went up to like a 730. And then I sat down in one day, I got seven credit cards and I secured about $75,000 in capital at 0%. So that changed my life. I mean, going from 50K in debt to now having 75 grand, that's a surplus of $25,000. I documented that whole thing. So everyone's like, dude, how'd you do that with credit? And then boom, my second light bulb went off. Instead of just helping people with Instagram, why don't I help people with credit now? And that's when I got the first business idea I've ever had, which was Credit Class. That was my first company, scaled that to about 350 students and a thousand bucks a pop. So for my first job, you know, multiple six figures, or not my first job, never work a job again. For my first company, you know, it was pretty cool. So 
transition, just fast forward. I don't want to, you know, get too into my story. It's very long. I ended up, you know, completing my goal of figuring out an income stream by myself. I got to leave Scottsdale. My lease was up in December of 2019. January 1st hit. I moved to Bali with my best friend, with my brand new business. I was preaching what I did every single day, which was leveraging credit, building income and traveling the world. I built that up to 350 students. And within that time, I was leveraging so much credit and I was helping people obtain so much 0% credit. And they're like, Colin, what do we do with this credit now? I got 70 grand of business credit. I got 150 grand at 0%. What do I invest in? And quickly that gave me the idea. I need more in a vertical. I need, I need to help people with an investment. And that is when I got introduced to e-commerce right around that time in February. I bought my first Amazon store with a buddy of mine. It was right around Q4. So, you know, sales were exploding and, you know, I did very well with that store. I promoted it. Same thing, just sharing my experience. Everyone then wanted help with e-commerce, partnered up with a buddy. And uh, yeah, now we have our own company. It's called Leverage Investments. We service about 118 clients right now on Amazon, Walmart, and Facebook Marketplace. I also help people in Leverage Lifestyle, which is pretty much just credit class 2.0. It just covers a lot more things like personal branding, credit, travel, Bitcoin, and uh, passive income. I help people get credit and then we put them into e-commerce and we automate their income and we get them you know, an extra three to $10,000 a month. Good. Yep. So I've, I've always thought to myself, I'm a real estate guy. I know real estate like the back of my hand, but people sometimes ask me, if you didn't get into real estate, what would you have liked to get into? And the answer is always e-commerce. Something yeah. about the internet and the scalability of it is, is super attractive to me. Yes. But I don't really know much about it. And I'm imagining that a lot of my viewers don't know much about it either. So what is e-commerce like for just somebody that uh, maybe doesn't know what it is and how does it work? For sure. So e-commerce, you know, it's, it's the biggest platform in the world right now, as far as shopping. So, you know, back in the day, everyone goes to the mall, you go to Walmart, you go, you know, COVID hit. And, you know, shit just, just went the other way. So now no one wants to leave their home. The metaverse is out. People are clicking a button, having DoorDash show up at their door with their food in 10 minutes. And you have one day shipping on Amazon. You can get a TV set up in your house in two seconds. So no one's going to go out anymore. So that's where we're moving to. We picked up on that trend, you know, about two and a half years ago. My partner actually has been doing it for four and a half years. And, you know, that's e-commerce. It's online commerce. So yeah. you don't have to do the work. You click buttons and you have products delivered to your house. And then there's a lot that goes into e-commerce. I've heard of something called drop shipping. And then, yes. I mean, I think you mentioned to me that there was something where Amazon fulfills your orders. What's the Correct. difference between uh, those two, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah. So great question. So there's drop shipping. So that's when you never hold a physical product. So there's no liability because you're only ordering a product once the customer's already ordered it off your store, then you'd go ahead, you buy it, you ship it to their house. Once they receive the shipment, then Amazon or Walmart, whatever platform you're selling on will pay you out because you've successfully delivered the product. So this is a phenomenal way to start because there's no upfront, there's no overhead. I mean, yes, you have to purchase the product first until you know the, the product gets delivered, then you get paid out by, the, by Amazon or Walmart, but you can leverage credit, which is the beautiful part. So if you just have, you know, let's say an Amex Business Platinum or an Amex Business Plum, you can now just put all those orders on your credit card. One, you get points. Two, you get cash back. Three, you get purchase protection. The product gets to the customer's house and then you get paid out and it's all good. You're never using your own cash. The second model is a little different. You need a little more capital because you're and you're going to take a little more risk if you don't know the products you're you're ordering. This is fulfilled by Amazon. So, in order to do fulfilled by Amazon, you're going to need a warehouse because you're going to be ordering products from private suppliers. So, for in our instance, we do protein powder and we do health and beauty. So, we do a lot of makeup, and we do a lot of protein. We have private suppliers and we order in bulk. So you save, you know, you get 30 cents off the dollar when you order in bulk like that. We ship it to our warehouse in New Jersey. It comes in a huge, a bunch of brown boxes. Let's say we're doing protein powder. They're just giving us, you know, the protein. We have to then, you know, seal it, wrap it, make sure it's all, you know, good to go. There's not problems. Then we put it on pallets. We box it up and then we ship it out to Amazon's warehouse. Once it gets to Amazon's warehouse, 
then it's fulfilled by Amazon. So that's the Amazon FBA model. It's a little more safe because Amazon does everything. It's going to be packaged in their boxes, their stickers, and you got a lot more benefits because you're not just drop shipping from random suppliers all around the country. So that is definitely the more scalable model. And yeah, it's what they want you to do. Technically drop shipping, they don't really want you to be doing it, but if you, you know, do it right, and you make sure your metrics are smooth, then you should be good to go. So I've heard of drop shipping stores, and I know that sometimes some of the stores get shut down. What's the reason why either through Walmart or Amazon, why a store would would get shut down? Yeah. So there are suspensions and terminations. And uh, unfortunately, you know, it's one of those things where like one party ruined it for the rest of us. So there's inexperienced sellers that come on, you know, Walmart as a platform just blew the hell up over the past two years. We were selling on it in January of 2020 when there was only 10,000 sellers. So we've been in the game for a very long time and we watched kind of what unfolded over the past year and a half. So it's pretty unfortunate, but basically, you know, a lot of gurus, like you said in the beginning, what they'll do is they, you know, they find a trend. They say, Hey, I want to take part in this. Let's try to take advantage. They will go out to the Philippines. They'll go to Bangladesh. They'll go wherever they can hire cheap teams. These cheap teams will then advertise, Hey, we're experts at Walmart. You might even get DMs saying, Hey, we can build you at Walmart stores. These guys basically white label these teams out there. They pay them, you know, a couple grand and and then they're charging $40,000 for stores. They outsource it. They make it look like their company. And then these teams have no idea what they're doing. Obviously, there's a huge language barrier. There's no way to oversee these people. They're never flying out to meet them. And basically, these people are now, the way they run it, and we found this out because we do tracking and we understand how this stuff works, they're not making their own tracking orders. And they're basically, if they're drop shipping from Amazon and selling on Walmart, they're having the Amazon boxes literally show up at the Walmart club client's house. And they're like, I ordered from Walmart. Why do I keep getting Amazon boxes? They file a report. There's a claim. Boom, your store is suspended. So that's one way. And, and there's very easy ways to avoid that. And what we do at our company is we do self listings. So all of our products get delivered to our warehouse first, even for the drop shipping model. And then we basically create our own listing. So it's self listed. Even if they tried to track it back, you always want that original address going to your warehouse. That's where it originated. We're telling the truth. It's our products, where it's coming from. So yes, if you look at the guidelines on Amazon and Walmart, they don't want you drop shipping. Like drop shipping is technically against their guidelines. So you can do FBA, you can do self listings, you can sell your own products. There's many ways to go around it. There's many ways to fly under the radar, but because of what happened, it's been crazy crackdown. And, you know, there was a lot of suspension, a lot of terminations. Unfortunately, even our clients did get caught up in that, but it's all about how you prepare when things do happen like that. So we have our Amazon FBA hybrid model. If there was a situation where we had a client get suspended or terminated, you can talk to any of my clients. They are now on the Amazon FBA platform and we are scaling them, you know, on that platform. So there's always a backup plan, but some companies don't have a backup plan. I didn't even realize that uh, they were receiving, because I know some people were buying off Amazon and taking it to Walmart. And then that makes sense why they would have the Amazon stickers on it. You said that the other one was more scalable, the fulfilled by Amazon. I, I would imagine that the drop shipping would be more scalable because you're not really holding the product. And the other one seems like just more work. Like they're obviously delivering it to your warehouse. And then from your warehouse, they're delivering it to the Amazon store. And then they're delivering it to the consumer. Why is that one more scalable? Just set of uh, curiosity. Yeah, in terms of uh, you know risk, it's definitely more scalable because you're doing everything right. You know, you're partnered with Amazon, so there's no chance of suspension unless your products are actually like terrible and they're and they're broken and you're sending them over to them. Then there's going to be an issue, but there's no drop shipping violations. So that's why I said it's more scalable. But yes, in a perfect world, if there was zero problems with drop shipping, it would be incredible that everyone would just scale to infinity. Um, but of course, you know, there's, once you're doing that much volume, we are not fulfilling it, right? So Amazon, they're fulfilling everything. You can crank that volume up. You keep making your orders bigger. You keep reinvesting your profits into your orders. Amazon takes care of all the nitty gritty. When you're drop shipping and you're listing 15,000, 20,000 products, once you start getting into the multiple six figures a month in sales, things get out of control. I mean, you're drop shipping from private suppliers. Maybe you're doing Amazon self-listing to your warehouse. 
it's very hard. That's why a lot of our clients have two, three, four stores, because once you get past the, the 100K mark, that's when we say, hey, look, you know, we can keep it here. Q4, you're going to be doing about 100K plus a month. Then, you know, we would like to separate that and, and get you at least in a, in a zone where we feel comfortable, you know, at 50, 60, 70K a month. The drop shipping almost feels like, like you're a really good marketer. You're really good at optimizing the listing somebody's clicking on yours or buying it. And then obviously you just have to know that you can, that you're advertising it for more than what you can get it somewhere else for. And then they'll deliver it to that person eventually. But it seems so, a lot more riskier basically. Yeah. So the beautiful part about using Amazon and Walmart is there is no advertising. The advertising is their platform. You just list it on there and people see it because people don't go on Google to find products. They go on amazon.com. They search in toaster oven and it pops up on the screen and they click buy. So we have zero advertising dollars that we're spending on Facebook ads, Google ads. We literally just list products on our clients' stores and they get sold. Obviously there's a software that goes into it that helps us determine the hot products, but yes, it is technically that easy. What I was referring more in terms of marketing would be like, obviously there are same products, but different sellers and some sellers are selling more than some other seller on there. Like, what would you say is the difference? Like, obviously, I imagine that there's some strategy when listing the items for sale. Can, can you share any insight on? Of course. So competitive pricing is obviously number one. You know, if your prices are too high and you don't want to adjust fast enough, someone's going to take you out and get the buy box. So there's something called the buy box on both platforms. So once you have good enough metrics and you've been selling for a decent amount of time, you get something called the buy box where they'll basically take your product that you're listing and they move you to the front of the page. So you get that box spot and you're the hottest product. When someone types in toaster oven, you're number one. You get rotated in and out of that based upon your metrics. So everyone needs a fair share of the buy box, but to even earn a buy box spot, you better have perfect tracking ratings and you better have good metrics. So that's why, you know, for Amazon, for instance, for the FBA model, for the first three months with the FBA hybrid model, we're only doing wholesale. So we're only doing FBA. We're getting, you know, slow and steady, perfect metrics, perfect tracking, making sure that we have a good relationship with Amazon, getting that buy box, and then we're off to the races. With Walmart, same thing. You want to make sure you get two-day shipping, which is a label they slap on you that says, hey, this customer can deliver products in two days or less. That's amazing you know, title to have. People are going to trust that a lot more. Why would you pick someone that says five-day shipping over two-day shipping? So we always try to get those labels. We try to get the metrics up as fast as possible, but it is a slow process. And if you try to rush it and you go past and you go too fast and you don't get that buy box or you don't get two-day shipping, it's a lot harder to then go back and get those things once you've already scaled to, let's say, $50,000 in a month without them. So you want to make sure you get them before. Now, uh, what about the Amazon fulfillment? Like um, a part of that is finding a supplier. It sounds like most of the suppliers are overseas. How does somebody go about like, is that something that your company does? Or is that something that like, like, in other words, how did you guys find your first supplier? That's the secret sauce. <laughs> but uh, so, so I, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm very blessed. I found my partner, Mike, he lives in New Jersey. He operates the warehouse. So there's operations, Mike, we're co-owners, I'm sales and marketing. You know, I do a lot of the funnels and stuff. And then Mike is all, you know, nitty gritty in the warehouse employees, you know, managing, building teams, doing all the fun stuff over there. So Mike, you know, has been doing this for four and a half years for the wholesale model. So Mike went out and, you know, just through connections and just through trial and error, really making orders, seeing how the products were, you know, creating a, a relationship, a long lasting one. That's how he found, you know, our, our health and beauty and protein product suppliers. So we've been working with them for four and a half years. When we add on, you know, an Amazon FBA new client, let's say for yourself, if you got a store, you don't have to worry about finding products. You don't have to go out and find private suppliers. They're actually US based too, which is amazing. And this protein that we use is US based. Yeah, man, it's pretty much plug and play. You know, we just add some extra orders in depending on how many new clients we have for that week. We get shipments in every single week. We obviously do our packaging. We put them on the pallet. We ship it off to Amazon. You know, it's funny. It makes me think uh, this weekend, I, I watched the Narcos 3. And uh, they were going back and forth with different suppliers and going out there and building relationships. When you yep. were explaining that whole thing that your uh, partner does, that's kind of the first thing that popped in my head. But obviously, it's relationships. You know, you yes. go out there, you test people, you 
establish a good relationship. What are some of the things that have gone wrong or that you've seen, even maybe not from you guys directly? I know in real estate, like everybody has this magical picture that real estate is like a get rich really quickly, but there's a lot to learn in real estate. What about in your line of business? What are some of the things besides the drop shipping that could go wrong? And then have there been any instances where maybe there was some massive losses and and how did you guys adapt or recover from that? Yeah, I love this question. Um, So there's a lot of different things. So for instance, one for the FBA model, you know, the physical model, we had a flood about three feet of water into our warehouse a couple months ago. So I flew down there to check it out. And man, the whole thing was destroyed. We lost about $100,000 worth of inventory. We do have insurance and we were able to get a business loan. So yeah, I mean, you know, there's there's things like that in physical business. Obviously that's why drop shipping's, you know, a little bit better in terms of, you know, not having to deal with anything physically. But then again, I'll give you an example of a drop shipping problem. So when this whole thing, you know, broke loose with all the people rushing to Walmart and getting sloppy, what Walmart did was they just terminated about 50% of sellers in one day. It was a Friday. We had, you know, about 30 clients giving us calls. We called the clients first, but, you know, we then had to set up phone calls to say, and I had to talk to Mike, like, Mike, what are we going to do? You know, we have 30 clients, their stores were terminated, not a suspension, terminated. You cannot sell anymore because of a violation. They just labeled pretty much drop shipping violations. Some of them were, you know, very vague with even what the reasoning was, but this happened to the entire industry because we're in chats with a lot of other company owners. Some companies, they just you know, go right to their contract. They're like, Hey, you know, if this happens, we told you it's, it's not our fault. Us on the other hand, obviously, you know, I I feel like that's a scam. I've been scammed before. If you're not getting a product or service delivered, we're not running anything. That's an issue. You're either getting your money back or we're going to do something else. So what we had to do is we scheduled 30 calls. Literally, I flew to New Jersey. This was at the same time as the flood too. So when it rains, it pours, right? So it all happened at once. Flew down there. And luckily we have the warehouse. We've been doing FBA for three and a half, four years. So what we did was we literally just opened up the Amazon FBA hybrid model to everyone. So anyone who was terminated, we just got right on this new platform. Luckily, all my clients, you know, they understand credit. So if their money was held, you know, by Walmart uh, when it got terminated, they have their purchases on a 0% card for 12 months. So the max Walmart uh, can hold your money is 180 days, you know, which is pretty bad. But if it's not in your cash, you're not liable. And the banks are taking care of that with the 0% interest. So you get paid out six months later, you pay off your card, your, you know, all your funds are released. So luckily just the way, you know, our transparency, the way we tell clients of the risk, everyone's very well aware, you know, when they do receive a call like that, you know, there's always a risk that something like that could happen. And I can say now confidently that, you know, our clients are very happy set up on Amazon. They're, they're all scaling very nicely. And, you know, we all have moved them to that new platform. So like I said, you know, we have plan B's, we have optionality for our clients. We have Facebook automation, we have Amazon FBA hybrid, and we have Walmart. So yeah, that's pretty much, you know, what happened. But basically in the drop sh- or not the drop sh- in the FDA, like, or you basically allowed them to invest with you guys on the FDA model, basically for the clients that got shut down on the Walmart. Store. No. So we gave it to them for free. So, you know, they paid, uh, you know, 35,000 for a Walmart store. Some of these people were running six months, eight months, you know, doing very well, but then the termination happened because of the entire, you know, shutdown. So basically what we said is, Hey, look, we want to get you up and selling again. We're going to offer you a free service. It's Amazon FBA. We educate them on the model. We get them set up, you know, we get their LLC, we get them approved on Amazon and they get going. Perfect. So it's their own business at that point, And they have to set up their own warehouse they have to get their own supplier or no? No, no, no. It's plug and play, man. So we literally manage everything. All they have to do is get approved on it on Amazon. And, you know, Amazon sends a postcard to their house. They open the mail, they get on a video chat, they get the approval. We take everything else. One of the things that I like of e-commerce stores as well over real estate is that it's more like real estate requires very specific knowledge. I know that e-commerce does too, as well too but it almost seems like it's easier to scale a company to produce a lot large numbers in a shorter period of time. How do you systemize the back end of either an FDA or a drop shipping? Is that something that you guys are doing like in-house? 
Is that something that you guys like hire like virtual assistants to kind of handle this? Uh, any tips there? Great question. And, and I like to call this digital real estate. So you're in physical real estate. I'm in digital real estate. It's yeah. the same thing. We use leverage. We both have cash flow every single month. We just have a lot more cash flow. And it's a lot cheaper to get in. But, you know, if you're doing leverage with real estate, of course, you can get in, you know, very little money down. But anyway, yeah, man, basically what we do is we hire virtual assistants. We have a team out in the Philippines. We hire and train them in-house. Like I said, we don't outsource anything. We actually hire and train. There are employees, you know, we pay them on payroll. So that is what we do there. We have our physical employees. We have about 10 that work in the warehouse about six days a week. And then we have three other partners that are, you know, Mike's good friends, you know, from from college. We have Alex, we got Wilson, and then we have our VA, Kenneth, who speaks very good English out in the Philippines. You wouldn't even tell that he is from the Philippines. And then, yeah, we use a software. We actually created our own software. So we are actually in the in the process of getting that to a point where we can offer that to other automation companies. You know, we can make pretty good money on that. And the way that we've created it, I believe it's the best in the industry that I've seen. So we paid a lot of money for that to get that built. And then also I just invested today in a company that's called Scaling with systems. So they're going to help us even systemize even further to the point where I can actually step out of the business and focus full-time on YouTube, which is my passion. So yeah, I'm going to remove myself. I've been taking calls for, we have 118 clients. I've sold every single one of them. I've talked to every single one of them on the phone. We don't have any sales team. I'm everything. I'm the marketing, I'm the sales. So now we're just going to get that all automated. And then Mike as well. I have, you know, these guys that I paid, they're going to go into Mike's side too. They're going to look at our automations. They're going to look at our zaps. They're going to look at our contracts. They're going to make sure that everything is an Epson flow. So when someone comes in, you know, it's a, a machine. So we already have it like that, but you know, you know how business works. You got to keep investing in yourself. I'm doing the same thing with a company called Sharper Solutions, where they're coming in like consultants, basically, and looking at our business. Yep. Uh, developing workflows and everything like that. So exactly. exactly. We're kind of on the same page about that. You mind me asking what the margins look like for either drop shipping or the FDA, meaning I, I know that for real estate, they're pretty high because it's a service industry. There's no like physical product that you own most of the time. You're basically brokering a deal. What about uh, for e-commerce? What, what does that uh, look like? Yeah. So your margins are typically anywhere from 10 to 20% on Walmart and Amazon. And on Facebook, they're about 25 to 40%. The margins are very high on Facebook, but we don't have a software that we can plug in there to integrate. So we can't get the volume that high because everything's super physical. You know, we're listing every single product, removing every single product. You know, when we have a software integrated with Amazon and Walmart, it makes our VAs lives a lot easier. It's super fast. We can list thousands of products and not that long of a time. So yeah, Facebook has higher margins just because we have a wider selection of products to choose from, from many different places. But yeah, Walmart and Amazon, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20%. What is the Facebook one? Is that like basically like an ad whenever I see an advertisement that comes up or is that like marketplace or what is that? Look yeah, like? exactly. Exactly. It's marketplace. So we're literally just going on your Facebook account. You know, we get access, you give it to us, and then we list products on the marketplace, but we're drop shipping them. Usually you'd go on there, you'd sell your TV, your couch, you know, some hand-me-downs, whatever. What we do is we go on there and we'll just find products just how we do with Walmart and Amazon, but we're going to physically list them on there as if we have them in our possession. We just drop ship them. That's actually a great idea. Uh, yep. I mean, I'm imagining that people are just shopping for other stuff and all of a sudden they see something that they like. What would be an example of a product that you guys would potentially list on a Facebook marketplace? Yeah. So, I mean, we've done, like I, I always bring up toaster ovens just because I see them all the time. Toaster ovens, coffee machines, uh, electronics, health and beauty, even some food stuff. I mean, dude, everything. Do you guys do anything with like Shopify or anything like that? Like any Shopify stores? And why that's what we stay away from. So we don't we don't run any ads. We don't want to. Um, we leverage the largest platforms in the world so that we don't have to have that expense. So basically, it's a less riskier option to do it this way than having to run your own marketing ads and then having to physically have the. The inventory basically cuts out marketing completely, which is a huge, it could be a huge expense basically. Yeah. So if you're, if you're creating a brand, you basically have to create a brand the way you're talking about it. So you'd still be drop shipping it. You can go on Alibaba, you can go on any of those overseas websites. You find a hot product. That's a niche, you know, maybe like a hot dog toy that everyone's talking about. And then you create a website and then you run ads 
on Facebook, on YouTube, promoting your product. And then, you know, you get orders and then you fulfill them, you know, from Alibaba to that person's house. That's a lot of work. What's the benefit to your clients doing the FDA with you guys versus to them just doing it on their own? Like, and not the benefit to your clients. What's the benefit to you guys? Obviously, I'm, I'm imagining that there's a there's a fee involved as well, too. And the benefit to the client is probably like they don't have to worry about anything. So for Amazon FBA, so it's FBA, uh, fulfilled FBA. by Amazon. Okay. Yeah, not, not FBA. FBA. Well. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of benefits, right? So, you know, for someone like you, we work with a ton of real estate investors. Uh-huh. So we have a lot of busy entrepreneurs. We have a lot of people that understand credit. They know e-commerce is hot and they want to get in, but they don't have the time to sit there for 80 hours a week and list products and do customer service. So what you do is you leverage us that are experts in it. We've done it, you know, hundreds of times you become a partner with us. It's your business. It's your LLC, your bank account, your credit cards. We have no access access to that stuff. We are just managing your store. So you're paying us as a service provider to say, Hey, look, I set up my LLC. Here's my credit card. This is my bank account. Run this for me. Do the customer service. I'll give you 35% of my profits every single month. I'm going to take 65%. That's how it's done. So you look at it kind of like, you know, if you were going to buy a Starbucks, you're paying a franchise fee, right? Usually you pay 500,000. They're going to set you up with everything you need, the employees, the operations, the SOPs, you got it all. It's a turnkey system. And then you're obviously going to have to profit share with them too. So it's the same exact thing. It's the same model. It's very popular. And and like I said, I mean, for FBA, for that example, specifically, that's a lot of work. You got to get a warehouse. You got to get machinery. You got to get a pallet machine. You got to get everything, forklifts. So yeah, I mean, there you're going to save a ton of money. And then also for drop shipping, I'm sure as hell, you don't want to sit home, you know, on a Friday night, you know, clicking, clicking your mouse all day, finding products. So cool, man. And then you have a couple of programs, uh, one of them being leverage lifestyle. And uh, yeah. can you mention the other ones and can you kind of tell us for our viewers how they work? For sure. Yeah. So leverage lifestyle. Um, like I said, I started credit class in 2019 uh, and that kind of evolved into all of my other obsessions. So credit was just one thing. And I didn't want to just stick with that because I was getting super intense into Bitcoin. I bought a home. I did the house hacking method. Um, I wanted to talk about a wide variety of things. So I picked five pillars to talk on and that's where Leverage Lifestyle was born. So the five pillars that I teach in my course, Leverage Lifestyle, our personal branding is number one. It's the most important thing. I teach everyone how to create their own personal brand and then figure out you know, what high income skill they can become an expert at and bring value to the market. Number two, we focus on credit because when you get in the business, when you become an entrepreneur, the dumbest thing you could do is spend your own money. You want to leverage the banks. So we teach you how to scale your personal credit first so that you can then jump in the business credit and get that $100,000 on multiple cards at 0% interest for 12 months. And once you have credit, now you want to invest. So then we talk about passive income. So we talk about the house hacking method, how to put down 3.5% or less on a house, get three tenants in there, live for free, have your mortgage paid for and cash flow a little bit each month. So nothing too crazy. I don't talk about how to flip homes. Just that method I stick to. And then also, obviously, we educate all on what we just talked about, which is, you know, e-commerce. We have many different platforms. We educate them how to get ready for it. Then we talk about travel because now you're going to be spending all that credit. You're getting tons of points. So I teach you exactly how I've traveled the world for free for the past two and a half years. First class, Maldives, Dubai, suites, overwater villas, all that stuff. You should never be spending a cent on any of it. It's all free. And then finally, Bitcoin, saving your money in Bitcoin. You're going to be earning money from your businesses. You're going to have a lot of cash. You don't spend the cash. You save the cash in the most asymmetric bet of human history. And then you spend your money with credit cards and the banks pay for everything. This is something that I ignored for a long time. And it's the personal brand. Like I would sell a house and I'm obviously selling uh, 150 homes a year. Uh, making nearly 2 million in in commissions and in sales a year. But I ignored the personal brand for a long time. Why is that important? And this is something that just in the last year, I, I realized that people with personal brands are killing it, bro. Yeah. 
So you'd probably you'd probably be doing 10 million in commissions if you had 100,000 followers and you had a bigger personal brand. Just being completely honest, I 10 x my income and my wealth in literally two and a half years. You know, I have a net worth of almost $4 million now, liquid. So yeah, I mean, dude, I was 50 grand in debt. That shouldn't be possible. That was never possible 15, 20 years ago. The internet came along, 2008 came along, social media came along. People are literally talking about their favorite Smurfs and creating a brand around it and making $80,000 a year living a happy life. So I think the most important thing is your credibility. Everyone lives online now. The metaverse is here. So it's just going to keep getting crazier. So the people that actually went all in right now or yesterday are the ones who are going to be at the forefront of where everyone's getting their information from. Schools, yeah. colleges, it has not changed in a hundred years. I think everyone knows now it's a scam. So everyone now is going to be getting, getting information from personal brands, people that they trust, I want to be one of those people. So I'm going all in on YouTube, going all in on Instagram and everything I've been doing for the past two and a half years. I just want to go harder and get a much more bigger base of credibility. So yeah, I think, you know, personal branding is the absolute most important thing. There's only one thing I could teach. That's what I would teach. And then what's one piece of advice that you'd give to like business owners or people obviously that are looking to grow their influence? I would just invest and take risks, man. I mean, look how fast we're moving with life. Look how uncertain everything is, you know, get out there, get uncomfortable every day. You know, for me, I think of what happened in my life was just the slight edge. I don't know if you ever read that book, but you have consistent good habits over time. And then one day it seems like you're just going like a hockey stick and taking off and uh, you just got to feed that fire. So that's what I've been doing. Success loves speed. Um, so every day, you know, crazy good habits, you know, crazy work ethic, morning routine, separating myself, doing the opposite of the masses and you're going to be just fine. Stop giving a shit what other people think of you. Yeah, man. Go out there and crush it. Well, I've enjoyed having you on the show. If people wanted to get a hold of you, what would be the best way for them to do that? Yeah. So you could just, it's at Colin Yerkeson on Instagram. I have Twitter, I have YouTube, and I have TikTok. So I post on all platforms. If you just shoot me a DM, you can also head to leveragelifestyle.com. You can find all my products and services there. And also just for you guys, if you give me a DM and you, you know, mention Jose, I'll give you a special Black Friday deal. It's going to be next week, but you know, I'm going to honor it for you. If you do want an Amazon store, if you do want a Walmart store, I'll give you $5,000 off. This only happens one time a year, which is Black Friday. So I'll extend the sale to you guys. Just mention Jose and you'll get $5,000 off. So it'll be 30 grand instead of 35. Awesome, guys. Well, to all of our viewers, uh, this is episode number 89. We had Colin uh, Yerkeson. Uh, obviously, he educated us on the e-commerce process. I love the fact that you said digital real estate. That's obviously something that I could relate to. I appreciate you being on the show. And uh, if we could ever be of service, we're happy to help. Awesome, my man. Appreciate you. Thank you, man.